so okay one way right to look at what i want to show you today is that it is part three of an epic now four year project and well you know, the end is close closer than ever really i've still not got there not quite the other way to look at it is that uh, the journey is the reward okay i mean actually just with writing really isn't it if the end result can be great yes but you've got to enjoy the, the thousands of hours typing my way you've got to all this is is that i am trying to make a dashboard for my office a screen that shows me things like uh time in the two or three countries that i tend to write for uh the date because i keep forgetting that uh my schedule for the day maybe actually at times i've had a chart showing progress of different projects and things yeah glanceable information and i promise you dashboards are really good very useful but this time my third go at it since 2020 i also know that there are two separate parts of this that i think you're going to find useful if you don't already know them even if you don't want a dashboard hello i'm william gallagher and this is 58 keys which as ever as always is for writers like you and me who use and who write on macs and iphones and ipads i do subscribe because well, we do have so much to talk about, uh, even if you are right now looking at me, wondering if I will, um, if, am I planning to hold off telling you these two different bits that I'm so sure will be useful to you? I can't fully do it. Let's do the first one. No, look, the first is a feature in Mac OS for the Mac that's helpful with different screens. And the second is this ancient feature in the amazing keyboard and mouse app that helps you control things. You'll see. First, Mac OS and this dashboard thing. This is going to take a minute to get there. Um, I know I have this quite wide monitor, but I recently inherited a big TV set and a small one. Since I also, in the drawer somewhere, I had an old T Apple TV uh, box, I set up the big TV and figured I had finally solved a large dashboard problem. Um, I, I should say, I used to use this. This is iPad the one. They kept failing, power ply, spy pump and things. And then also had to long-term loan that ipad to a family member i did the second thing i dug out all the old technology around the office um an old mac or this, and it kind of worked until this mm, gave up then fast forward two years and i set up this big tv with my apple tv box and now well i have a television in the office sure but also through a way i'll show you in a second i can extend my mac desktop onto that huge tv set or i could if i hadn't broken the tv in transit okay possibly big tv possibly far too big anyway that's out but there was also this wee small one same thing plugged in my apple same apple tv box into it extended my mac screen over to it it worked it's working now you can see it but while you can see that i don't think you can see this sitting here in the office that small screen is so low resolution so fuzzy it gives me a headache I got this far, okay, I gave up, and actually I wasn't going to show you any of this, you know, but then I started playing with my iPad. I should say, I'm, I am still working on this for my office, Matt, but let me show you, uh, it's easy to show you this iPad and MacBook Pro. So, here's the MacBook Pro, here's the iPad, uh, it's my iPad Pro from 2021, I use this a lot, but if we just jump ahead a moment, here's my iPad acting as an extension to my Mac's screen and if we jump ahead another moment here it is being used as a dashboard more or less like i always wanted more or less on the positive side well that's the first thing i wanted to see you'd see if you didn't already know it so that you can drag apps over from your mac and have them here on your ipad or on a tv screen with an apple tv box i'm just i'm not keen yet on what i've set the apps up to be there i mean i do really like this one this is studio clock and i love that because it works like the clocks uh did and i think still do in bbc radio studios nostalgia but otherwise yeah i'm still playing with what i want the screen to show and i and yeah i'm just it's not doing it yet plus you start up both devices right ipad and macbook pro or the mac and then you have to do this on the Mac, you open Control Center. You click on Screen Mirroring. You choose your iPad. Uh, first time you do it, you're asked, do you want to mirror the Mac screen so that everything on the Mac is on the iPad? Or do you want to extend the Mac screen so that the iPad is like a, an extra on the side 
of his grin, which is what I want. Then, you, every time you have to drag the apps and windows over to where you want them on the iPad, every, every time. It's not like there's a lot to it, drag, but every time. So it'd be a bit better, wouldn't it, to run a shortcut? Or even better, to just push a button? And this is part of the second thing. I know you're like if you don't already know and use it. And the thing that, particularly this thing, if you never even want a dashboard, you're going to find a use for this. Short version, it's Keyboard Maestro. Um, that shortcut you saw and the Stream Deck button, all they do is launch a Keyboard Maestro macro that I wrote. I've tried describing Keyboard Maestro before this app. Uh, a couple of videos on 58 keys that cover it, but it does so much. Short version, it can control your Mac. But I mean, Surface, Scratch. I've had it 15 years or more and I use it extensively, but I know I still, I'm using, what, a single percent of what it can do. But here's that one percent. This business of opening control center, right, and then turning on screen mirroring. There is a way to do it from the keyboard. Um, you should be able to uh, press uh, the function key and the letter C to open the control center, but it doesn't work on a MacBook Pro. Uh, it might not work on different keyboards. Uh, or same thing, um, command function key one should just turn on this screen mirroring extension thing, but it isn't working for me and yeah i can't quite work out why different keyboards different machines but even then even if you could even if you can turn on screen extension and even if you can open the control center first what you definitely can't do is then press a key to select that you want to use your ipad you have to look for that control and you have to click on it i have to look for first for where where control center is in the menu bar click on that then find the screen mirroring button click on that and then look for the line that says my ipad click on that or keyboard maestro can do all the looking for me if if i take a screenshot of the button that i want I can put that into Keyboard Maestro and when I run this macro, it will look for what it looks like that button. I mean, more than look, actually, it will find it and then it will click for me right in the center of the button. And I think that that is just magical, isn't it? Let's try doing that on a PC. However, it is also frustrating because buttons change on a Mac. Most of the Mac, the buttons, the windows, they're translucent or slightly translucent, meaning uh, for instance, if you have something you know, bright white on the screen, while well, the button in front of it looks a bit bright, and the screen behind is dark, you, you get the idea. So it turns out it can be really hard to tell Keyboard Maestro what this button you want will look like at any given time. Keyboard Maestro, the maker obviously knows this, and it lets you do all sorts of things like saying, yeah, not fussed quite how accurate it is. If the button looks vaguely right, well, then just click anyway but there are still times it just doesn't work assuming it does work though and it does most of the time turning on this screen screen extension to my ipad is is one thing right but we still need to put the apps that i want on it rather than dragging each window every time there are many ways to position windows apple has added ones for it but we're already in keyboard maestro we've already paid for Keyboard Maestro, actually a ludicrously cheap price for all it does, but you know, we've paid it, so let's just carry on using Keyboard Maestro. First, what I did was I opened the apps I wanted, I positioned them on the screen where I wanted them to always be, and then I ran a little Keyboard Maestro macro that I wrote, a separate thing here that I wrote, that all it does is get the details of the window's size and position. Then, went back into that Keyboard Maestro macro that does the pushing of the buttons and said, open this app, position them here, and we're done. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd like to promise you that it's taken longer to tell you all of this than you to do, but I'm not 100% sure that's true. I've fiddled a lot here. but uh, And actually, you need to say, I already had the iPad, I already had Keyboard Maestro, and I mean, this is hardly essential, it's fun, but it's not essential, I already had the Stream Deck. So, yeah, using what you've already got, okay. If you haven't got them, the little Stream Deck there costs £150 or $150. Keyboard Maestro, I swear you will not believe this, is $36. I don't know how many years of daily use have I had from that app for $36.
Uh, but anyway, uh, if you fancy having a dashboard, then this is the closest I've got. It's still, it's not done yet. I don't, I don't, for instance, uh, I used to have an old iPad mounted. Well, I don't want to mount this iPad on the wall because this iPad works and I use it a lot. I take it with me everywhere. It's like comfort blanket practically. And I'm going to continue playing with trying to use the TV set since I have it. And actually, I suppose TVs are not as expensive these days as they used to be. Maybe I'll buy one possibly in between the two sizes and maybe I'll warm out that. Yeah, but even if you don't want a dashboard, I think the ability to temporarily extend your Mac out to an iPad, to a TV with an Apple TV box, it can be so handy. And being able to tell this Keyboard Maestro app to look for a button and click it for you, marvellous. Plus, look at how much time we've spent, we've found to spend not writing. That wasn't the purpose, I promise you. <clears throat> so back to work. That's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Uh, do you remember the 58 Keys writing workshop videos that come out every Monday? But for now, thank you for watching and keeping me away from the keyboard as well. Take care of yourself though, okay? Write more and I'll see you soon.